Hello there, welcome back. Welcome back to the Technology Innovation Hub. So it's going to be a session from uh, Oracle Portal. And uh, we have been doing the Oracle architectural journey, the non-maintenance architectural journey. So let me share the screen. I think I may remember we have discussed this uh, client and server process and the, the process IDs and the sessions and the connections and those things, how those addresses are taking place. And now we need to continue that one uh, for a bit, just to understand the multi-threading system that is introduced by Oracle in 2LC. Under basic process architecture, so we will continue to the next session. Of course, it's going to be the last one on uh, under basic process architecture. So multi-processes and multi-threaded Oracle database system. So what meant by this? Oracle is a multi user multi process and multi threaded database system that is what because uh, we know in the industry we have databases which is claiming uh, we are a multi user database and some are telling we are a multi process database and some are telling we are a multi user multi process database so when it comes to oracle they are having all of these three significant features the Oracle is telling is a multi-user, multi-process, and multi-threaded database system. From 2LC, they introduced the multi-threaded database system and uh, that feature as well. So we need to enable that one using a parameter in Linux, uh, Unix, and Solaris is supported. Windows, it is not. Uh, let's come to that. Uh, let's talk about that in more detail uh, later. Okay, for the time being, in order to understand this, uh, what do you mean by this trading, multi-trading system in uh, Oracle database related to operating system, we need to have a certain background information with related to OS. So that's why I'm giving that background information for you. So just try to uh, grab it and uh, by little. And the very first thing is we know in uh, Linux, we have, you know, we have the run levels and run level zero, one, and those things, init systems and those things are there. Uh, the very first thing is the init system or the system D, the system daemon process. So earlier we are telling it as the init uh, system, but now we are telling it as uh, with the new operating system, we are telling it as the system daemon process. Because this is the process which everything starts. That is the, that's why it's mentioned system D is the grandfather of all processes. All processes running on Linux can trace they are relationship back to the system D. So they, this is where this uh, hierarchy or the inheritance, the process inheritance comes, the parent process and the child process. We will uh, see the practical lens well. So you can see uh, system D is becoming the parent process for all of those uh, processes which are going to trigger after that. So parent process is the PPID, parent process ID, and the PID is the process ID. So in a uh, operating system, we are going to have a unique number for each process ID. Whenever uh, a program is starts, a process trigger, that is how the way the operating systems are working. Whenever there is some application trigger, there's a process starting. So that is given a unique process ID. And after that, it can trigger another processes. Now here, the very first uh, in Linux systems, the most initial process will be the system D, and that becomes a parent process for upcoming sub processes. So as a result, we will have PID one for the uh, system D process. And there's another one called the kernel process, PPID zero, the kernel, kernel or the thread, kernel thread process. I, I think we can take a look at uh, practically this one. Let's take a look at it before container presentation. Uh, let me take you to here. And if we just run this command, I think this document, let's go to it uh, hands on. I'll do it separately, but for the time being, you can see a process is a computer program under execution. Understood. I just mentioned that. Linux is running many processes at any given time. Those things are understood. We can monitor them using the PS command or the UI graphical user interface. Also, they are. So, PS is a command line uh, to list, check those details. Then, the thread. A thread is a lightweight process or a part of a process. Within the process, you can have several threads, or we are telling it as another lightweight process within the uh, process, that is a thread. 
a process can do more than uh, one unit of work concurrently by creating one or more threads. Uh, those threads, uh, being lightweight, can spawn quickly. That's fine. So let's come back to this explanation later with the hands-on. But for the time being, I just want to show you this. Let's identify the processes. If I just run this command, ps minus ef, uh, let's run it. I think the command is here. Okay. So this will give extract the top uh, uh, four lines from the process output. And if you look at this one, I just want to show you that uh, system D and the kernel process. So this is the kernel thread. You can see here now uh, kernel thread that is having PPID, param process ID of zero. So because that's the very first process. And after that, you can see you have the PID. Now, PID is one for what? PID is one for the system D process, the daemon process, which is uh, a child of which one? A child of kernel thread. So kernel thread is the one which is the very first beginning. That's the root. So that triggers system D. That's why uh, system D is a child of this kernel thread. So you can see parent process ID for PID1. PID1 is system D. So parent process ID for PID1 is zero. So zero is kernel thread. So this is what I just want to show you in the PPT that those terminology was there. So in it to the system D, that's the process. It has a PID1. And on below that, I mean the root here we have at the beginning, very first starting place, will be the kernel thread, which is having the zero uh, parent process ID. And after that, you can see there's another PID. Okay, that's fine. Because this fellow can trigger many number of processes. That's why you can see even uh, this, uh, there's another PID called process ID number two, that parent is also this. And uh, for system D also the parent also this, that's okay. So that will continue. Let's try to understand that a little bit. Of course, I have extracted only four lines, but if you just uh, remove this one, you will have many processes. But little by little, let's try to understand. For the time being, just get to know kernel thread has the initial process. That means that is the starting of everything. And after that, we have the system D. So that is very clear. PIP parent process ID is zero, and it is the parent of system D. This one, you can see system D is one and the parent of that one is zero and zero is kernel thread. So just get to know that for the time being. So let's continue. Now, then you can see as for the hierarchy here given in the slide, PID two is a child of PPID one. That is understood. This is new process, process ID because every process we are going to have a unique PID. PPID can be duplicated because uh, for a given pair and process, there can be many processes. No? So here, PID2, process ID2, is having the child, is a child of PPID1. So PPID1, again, we can say it is a system daemon process. So this particular process is uh, triggered from system daemon. So that is what, that's what it means. That's why it became the parent of this particular PID2, child process. And again, you can see PPID is duplicated because system daemon is, uh, has triggered another process called 101 PID. But PIDs are unique, so PPIDs can get duplicated. Given parent can have many child processes. That's what it means. And here you can see PID 101. What is PID 101? Process ID 101 is both a child of system D, okay? This fellow is child of system D. That's true because his parent is PPID is one. And again, it has become a parent for this one. And below you can see why this PID has spawned this process. So as a result, 101 becomes the parent process ID for 1092. On the other hand, this fellow 101 is a child of system D. So that's how the hierarchy goes, the tree goes. So we can we go further below and let's see. Now here, okay, we have another PPI, now another process ID, it's a unique one. Again, the parent is 101. So if you go down further, yeah, what's this explanation? PPID of a child is the same as the PID of his parent. That is, that is true. 
PP uh, parent process ID of a child is the same as the PID of his parent. That is the same thing I was explaining here, because be before um, before becoming a parent, it may be a child process or another process. That's what it says. PP ID of a child is the same as the PID of its parent. Now you can see here uh, PP ID. I think from this side you can explain that term. Parent process ID uh, one is a child of system daemon process, but one or one uh, again you can see here it has become a parent. Here it is a child, and here it is a parent. So before becoming a parent, it was a child. That's all. That's what is this, and in, in, inherits in that way. PPID of a child is the same as the PID of his parent. So that's the inheritance. It's very clear here. And uh, you can see further, we can go down the hierarchy like this. You can see uh, PID uh, here again, we have, it's another new process, PID 109. And you can see PPID 1190. Why? Because uh, now this fellow has spawned this process. That's what it means. PID 1190 has spawned or has triggered 109. So therefore, this fellow has become the parent for this. And again, we have another unique process here. Likewise, and each PID is unique, understood, each PID is unique, but duplicate PPIDs are allowed since a parent process may have several child processes. I mentioned that one. You can see again, PPID is duplicated, but the PID is a unique. PID is, has never become duplicated here. A PPID, yeah, given parent can have many child processes. So that's a simple explanation for you to understand about this, uh, uh, the process. Uh, the whole objective here is to give you the parent process ID information plus the process ID information. What is the relationship? So because that basic understanding is required before going to threads. So up next, we'll understand what is threads, what are threads going to be. And in releases earlier Oracle 12C, Oracle processes did not run as threads. I mentioned that one earlier than 12C. Uh, on Linux, on Unix and Linux systems, Oracle 12C enables the multi-threaded Oracle database model with the parameter threaded execution. So this is what I mentioned. 12C enabled this feature, multi-threading mechanism enabled in 12C with this parameter. If you take a look at this parameter, let's go to that one, threaded execution. This is the parameter, and if you we can take a look at it actually. So let's uh, connect SQL class as a SysDBA. If you take a look at this parameter, I'm in 19C database. This is our environment, our practical environment we used to do. I think you can remember we uh, dual uh, installed. We had 12C and 19C in the same host. So this is the same environment I'm using. We just type show parameter thread. You can see the default value of this parameter, threaded execution, it is false. So that's the default. That's the default. And I think the explanation is here. This is what the documentation. And this is from, I guess, uh, 18. Doesn't matter. After 12, we have this parameter, even 19, we have. So threaded execution, threaded execution parameter, whether enable the multi threaded Oracle model. So by default, multi data model, model is not enabled. So default value is false. So you saw that in, even in my database, I haven't enabled it. And it is telling uh, modifiable, no. And uh, we have detail, and it's not a basic parameter. We let's try to modify it and we see what will happen. Starting from Oracle 2, as you can see, and th there are certain impacts. You cannot do all authentication if you do this. So just go through it. I'm not going to go, go to that much of details with this parameter that we can do later, but uh, it will disable all authentication. Password loss authentication will not be possible if we enable this parameter. So likewise, just take a look at that parameter as well, threaded execution, but this will be very useful in Linux and Unix system. Windows it is not supported. I know, so let's take a look at it here. And if I try to enable this one, all the system, this is what happened. It says modifiable, no, due to this reason. All the system set, threaded execution. 
I copy in a sign. Set error execution equal true. So let me just try it. So this is what it says. Initial and parameter cannot be modified because we need a bounce. We need to shut down. So let's try this one. All system pro scope. We can see SP5. So that is what, and uh, you need to restart the database and still the value is not, uh, you know these things, still the value is not modified because we didn't modify the runtime, we uh, modify the parameter in SP file. SP file means uh, we need to restart to come into the runtime, otherwise only in the server parameter file only it get modified. So if you restart this one, start up, uh, I'm just doing it quickly. Right, uh, this is not a good practice. So it's restarting startup force. It will do a board shutdown. Don't try it on production unless there's a real requirement. But uh, for a quick shot, we can do it startup force to restart the database. And once it restarted, um, yeah, so this is what happens. This is what happens. Because ooh, since I enable that parameter, uh, I enable this one and it says, uh, because I was doing voice authentication. May remember the login I just gave like this. So this is OS authentication, there is no password. So once I enable that parameter, I won't be able to do OS authentication. So let's try to get that to the password. So now I think uh, let's take a look at what has happened. Show parameter thread. So you can see it is been modified to true. That is right. If you are enabling this parameter, just take a look at the impacts like this, OS authentication will be disabled. And the behavior also will be changing because now it's starting uh, the threaded system. But uh, let's try to understand more detail. Prior to understand this parameter, behavior of this parameter, we need to know how Oracle is handling threads at OS level uh, in related to the database as well. So let's try to get, an, get that idea. And hope you got the basics of what I'm trying to do. I think we can stop this session uh, from here and I'll come to the next session with full hands on. So let's deep drive how the threads are going to work within the Oracle database with, with uh, operating system as well. And so let's stop here and uh, you can keep on subscribing because a lot of videos are there in the channel. So keep, uh, if you like the video, if you enjoy it, uh, subscribe to the channel. So I'll meet you soon in the next video. Have a great time. Right, bye bye.